All right, guys, I wanted to take a few minutes here and show you how I have the boat completely rigged for striped bass fishing. The reason I think this video is going to help is because we catch striped bass in freshwater, saltwater, rivers, lakes, oceans, bays, sounds, anywhere from the mountains of Kentucky and Tennessee to the coast of North Carolina, all the way up to Gloucester and everywhere in between. So you can imagine all the preparation we have to uh, go through to make sure we can catch all those different fish in different uh, types of situations. Now, obviously I can't keep every bit of gear for all that in the boat at once. And we have, I have garages full of stuff, but this is all the stuff that I'm gonna cover that is on the boat all the time. This is the basic necessities. And I think that a lot of the stuff that stays on the boat, if you take a minute and check it out, I think it might give you some ideas for your boat. So let's go ahead and get started inside the helm here. What you're gonna see, Right away are buckets. Buckets are your best friend. If you have room for one bucket, you probably have room for more. You can see we stack them up, right? You never know when you need to bail or God knows what you need, might need a bucket for. So the more the better. You can see all our electronics. I'll kind of get into that in a minute. But buckets, buckets, buckets. I love square buckets. If you can find a bunch of those, they take up a lot less space. I'm going to go ahead and show you what is in every single one. All right, right here we got our garbage. Good place to clean, keep cleaning supplies, bleach, stuff like that. Jumper cables, make sure you have jumper cables on the boat. These can save the day. Emergency UHF radio antenna. Nine times out of ten, if you have a problem with your radio, it's because your antenna is screwed up, the fitting is, is screwed up, something is busted with your antenna, have a backup on the boat. This thing was pretty cheap, I think it was like 40 bucks. I've had this in about five or six different boats. Extension cords for your chargers, different fittings. Can't say it over and over again, can't say it enough. Jumper cables, have jumper cables. Here are buckets and buckets. Here's where we keep our floats. Planer boards, ready rig TOS floats, hats. We have a T top, so hats aren't quite as important, but if you're out there in the sun, how do you stow hats? It's a great way to stow them right here. This is hard, keeps them from getting crushed. This thing is really, really cool. I like to keep stuff in here because this is the driest storage on the boat, directly under the T top. Mojos, shoot rigs. These are all my Tony Maja rigs. Got them ready to go. Fresh and salt water. First aid kit. Don't get a cheap first aid kit. Get something really nice. Something with a few hundred different pieces in it. Stuff from you know bug bite spray, Benadryl, stuff for headaches, painkillers, uh, you know, Tylenol, Advil stuff for wounds I've cut my hand so many times uh, I mean I've cut I got six or eight stitches just this year from, from tearing my hands up have stuff have a good first day kit don't get that little eight dollar one flares of course got a flare gun kit a couple flashlights extra batteries you know if you come and look I made a mess over here but if you come and look, I put these bins here. These are just from an office supply store. And you can see how cool they are. We got to keep everything in here. Your sunscreen, buffs, keeping the sun off your neck, extra fire, extra uh, life jackets, all kinds of little stuff. Towels, got to have your rags. Throwable. I have a throwable. Now let me look at my electronics real quick. Everyone asks about exactly what I have, so let's let's take a look. This is an S5100 chirp processor. You can do three chirp transducers at once. I have my 3D running here, my 3D structure scan. I don't really use the transducer anymore because of the active imaging, but I do still use my 3D box as a uh, expansion port. You see, I have all those ports plugged into it. Radar, 
I had an alarm here on my board in case anyone wants to steal it. Charger for the boat. My display is pretty simple. This is pretty cool. This charger here, what it does is it has my motor charge my house battery and my starting battery and it determines what needs the most voltage and makes the change on its own. Pretty cool. All right, let's move to the bow. Our anchor locker. I have a big, big anchor. This anchor I've had for several boats. This is for a boat up to a 36 foot boat. It's a Danforth, I love Danforth anchors. Now on the boat that I had, I had to trim it. These rods are actually much longer. The bar here in the Danforth was actually a lot longer, but the boat that I had it on, it was not, the locker wasn't big enough, so I had to trim it. This boat has a much larger anchor locker, so I can actually go with a larger one. But if it's not broke, don't fix it. This, this anchor does really well. Pretty heavy chain. I think it's half inch. I have about a about 15 foot. It's a pretty long chain. And if you look, you can see how nice that sits down in there. I love the uh, C Pro anchor lockers. You can see I can put that. That's 200 foot of rope. I could easily put, oh man, probably double that in there. And this doesn't hit anywhere. Gel coat finish inside, real nice too. Friction hinges, pretty sweet. When it comes to an anchor, find the biggest one you could afford and then buy the one that's twice that size. And if you can get the one that's three times that size, get it. You can't go too big with an anchor. Next box, this is insulated. All the boxes here are insulated. This is where I keep life jackets. This here is a four pack for adult life jackets. And then I have three in the larger sizes, extra large and double X. This is a triple X actually. Have a child's one, child life jacket in there for someone under 80 pounds. I know if you don't have kids, you're not thinking about it, but it could ruin the trip if somebody shows up with a young, young kid and you don't have the right safety stuff. So stick at least one youth life jacket down in there. All right, in all my boats that I've ever had, I've always had a cooler up here. Doesn't have to be a Yeti, but a good quality cooler. I wouldn't go with like an igloo, something with very thin walls, something that could take a beating. This is really great here for a boat that has a deck because right away, as soon as we anchor up or start trolling, someone runs up here and sits and that's one sole out of the way, up here and out of the way. You just use a tie down here. I'm gonna go ahead and take the time to show you everything. Some of the stuff your boat might may have, it may not have, but I want to take the time to go over everything. You never know, right? Let's cover it all. So 30 gallon live wells. On the Sea Pro, they're pressurized, which means I can squeeze the air out, especially important at the bow. If you're running in rough water and you want to beat up your bait or your catch, it squeezes all the air out on the bow, which is really nice. Now these boats have a recirculating option, which is fantastic for, for striped bass bait, for anything in fresh water, salt water, whatever. If you're gonna run on the trailer and you wanna keep bait, you can recirculate it, keep your eels alive, shad, whatever. Really nice option. So it doesn't just pump in fresh, it recirculates the water you have. All right, starboard bow box. Great options here with the C-Pro. If you look here, have a rack here, this is removable. Stow rods, you can see I have camera poles, I have my flag poles, I have bait nets, landing nets, everything I keep here. And starboard bow box, you can put four rods up to eight foot long. Let's check out the port side. The port side I use for lines, dock lines, fenders, you can see all my dock lines. And if you look here, you can see how easy this pops out. You just pull that pin. And this just comes right out. So it's a great option if you want to go ahead and keep rods and gaps and stuff in there. Or if you don't, eight foot rods. Let me show you something cool with these fenders. This little attachment is called a Fender Pro. Check this out. Pull up to the dock. Can you see that? You just go ahead and pop that in there. You're good to go. These Fender Pros, this is a larger Fender, it comes with a line attached to it like this with this little ring. Instead of attaching this to my Fender, what I did was I used 
little zip straps here, draw ties, and I left the line on here. So in case you want to move it to a place that doesn't have a Fender Pro input, follow me to the back. The valve, we got another one back here. So you just drop it over the side, pop it in. The way it's set is it protecting the top of my rail and the side of the boat, and I still have my line attached in case I want to attach it somewhere else. Love these. Another thing I keep in my box here. You should have one of these if you're a striped bass fisherman. This is a retriever. I made this one. But you can buy them. Plug knockers, umbrella rig retrievers. It's basically what it is. But I use it for everything. How many times you had a cast net snagged on the bottom, you lose your cast net or tear it up. You see that it's just a 12 watt treble hook. Put some weights and a clip, you just clip this to your line, slide it down, save your mojo rig, save your umbrella rig, and I've saved cast nets with this. This will grab the horn of the cast net, pull it up. Always keep one of these on the boat. I just made this, it was a couple bucks. Keep this in the same box with my lines and my fenders. All right, these are my pop-out rails, CE Smith rod holders. The reason I went with this design here, a few reasons. One, boats don't come with rails anymore, if you notice. That's just not the, uh, the design these days. I love these on the rail because we do so many different types of fishing. If I'm cut bait fishing, I want my rod high. My lines are out way away from the boat. I want my rod tips high so I can see them, right? See if the fish are biting, see what the baits are doing, see what the currents are doing. It leaves my rod nice and high so we can load and set the hook on that circle hook. So when I'm cut bait fishing, I want them high. When I'm downline fishing, I'll loosen them up, go down with them. I can adjust them left and right as well. Plus I can pop them out if I want to move it, you know, a couple rod holders down. I can do that. I could even take it, if I wanted to, and pop it into this one. Just lots of options. Alright, let's keep working our way back. This box here has my power steering pump. This is Suzuki 350 and it's power steering. Just a big old power steering pump. I don't like to keep anything else in there because I don't want that to get hot. I guess I could stow some other things in there, but I don't. Bench seat. It's nice about the bench seat here. Again, I know it's the seat pro thing, but it gets you behind the people that are driving the boat, operating the boat. Kind of keeps you out of the elements a little bit. But what I really like about this is the storage. Look at this. Look at all the storage in here. This here is all pro jigs. Flat fall jigs. Slow pitch jigs, flutter jigs, big Ben Parker jigs. There's all kinds of boxes with baits. And I'm gonna take some of this stuff out so you can see how much I can fit in here. Now we're getting down to the tool area. Very important. I have to have electrical connections, terminals, heat shrink, dielectric grease. Have this stuff on the boat. If you have it with you all the time, you probably won't need it. Good pair of crimpers. Don't keep those little cheap ones with the you know the color coded ones. Get a good pair of crimpers. Keep a cigarette lighter in there for your heat shrink connections. As I'm pulling all these boxes out, you can see how much storage I have. What I like about these is they go right in like file cabinets. All my boxes. More tools. Basic tools, you don't have to go nuts. You want sockets, you know, small screwdrivers, knives, pliers, adjustables, extra wire. Anything you can think of, you can't have too much. If you have it, you won't need it, right? All right, moving on. You see in the back all my Smith rod holders. This is where I store my rods when I'm on the highway. They're up here out of the way on the highway. I can have 10 rods back here. Awesome place to put them. They're out of the way. T-top blocks all the stuff on the highway if anything hits them. I just put this rail back here. 
Joey Scruggs is really good. He didn't make this rail for me, but he can make stuff for you. I'll put his number down in the uh, comments so you can find him. He can make all kinds of cool rails. He made some cool stuff for Chip Bragg, buddy of mine. All right, let me show you my anchor back here. What I have in this box, I keep cast nets and another anchor. Here I just have another cast net and a square bucket. It said buckets are your friends. It's a heavy anchor. Let me jump up here and show you. Okay, this is a 30 pound anchor. This one is just to keep our stern from swinging. The, the Danforth in the bow anchors the boat. That takes all the meat of the power of the boat. And we just drop this one straight down to keep the stern from swinging. It's old, it's been beat to death. It's got a slip ring in it. So in fresh water, if you snag a stump, you can pull it backwards. You don't need anything quite this fancy. A regular mushroom anchor will work. But get a heavy one. This one's 30 pounds. Again, Buckets are your friends. Extra lines. All right, staying at the stern, we have our tackle center back here. This is a Smith tool rack. Love these things. Put them everywhere. If you don't want to drill holes, you can use 3M two-sided tape. You know, just you can put all kinds of stuff in here. You can put hooks and keep a knife at every corner of your boat. You never know. You might have to cut yourself free. It could save a life. I had a buddy almost drown because he got some fishing braid wrapped around his finger snagged on the bottom as we drifted away and he had to go over the side luckily it came free but if he had a knife it would have made things a whole lot less scary all right open our tackle center it's a junk drawer on steroids basically you can configure these a hundred different ways but i use this one kind of as a junk drawer all kinds of good stuff you gotta have goop right if you look here you can see this leader rack this is just another way to configure it these are all my trolling leaders here you can put it this way there i mean i have boxes in here too you can sew two boxes in this i went with one box and my leader rack here so i can use the rest as a junk drawer pretty cool and it is a junk drawer loaded with junk these also pop out and they're lockable, pretty cool. We have another one over here. This one's configured a little differently so you can kind of get the idea. Again, I have Smith tool rack on the front. This one I keep leaders. You can see the uh, wrist spools. You can take these out if you want. And this has two boxes. This box here is just for a bunch of my heavyweights. This is my speed box. You've probably heard me talking about a speed box before. Always have a speed box ready with a bunch of your favorite baits. Just go-tos. Swim baits, jerk baits, bucktails, poppers, pencil poppers. So when you're riding at night, coming at the end of your day, you see fish breaking, you're ready to go. You don't have to find which box you had other stuff stored in. Have a good speed box with all your favorite baits in it. Just two or three of each of your favorite baits. All right, to the leaning post, more storage. What do we have here? This is actually designed for one big box, like this. You see this? One box, but I found that even though it's designed for this, it can fit two smaller boxes. I just had to put a little piece of a draw tie on here to make sure I can pull it out. You see, it fits two boxes. These are the smaller boxes. We have a Glass beads, swivels, lead weights, chunk hooks, circle hooks, all kinds of swivels. This one here has got more all around rigging type. Crimp sleeves, three-way swivels, rod tips, repairs, trolling swivels, three-way swivels, uh, more flip floats. Put a bunch of these on your boat. Bobber stops. I don't care if you ever use bobbers. Bobber stops. Awesome tool, a great way to put markers on your line every 10 feet if you want it for trolling or for jigging. Really great little tool to have there. Bait buttons, these add little rubber discs to your hook to keep your bait from getting rehooked. Trolling weights, tractors, chafe lines, all kinds of cool stuff. So you can see I could have went with one box here or the two smaller ones. I'm putting these back, another junk drawer. Can't have enough junk drawers, right? This drawer is removable. Pliers. 
tools, wrenches, get a lot. Velcro. Velcro is your friend. Tape. Remote controls for my trolling motor. Socket wrenches, cigarette lighters, electrical tape. Not a bag. What is not a bag? It's pretty cool. I haven't used it in a while, actually. What you do is you pull out a little piece, a section, tie a knot. You, know, you pull out as much as you want. It's got a little blade in here. You rip that. And now you have a bag. So you have a bag the size of whatever you pulled out. Garbage bag. Not a bag. Good stuff. Tape measures, scales. All right, I got my cooler back here on this rack. This rolls out. Just a cooler. The more storage, the better. Good place for putting weather gear, foul weather gear, rain gear. Very, very dry. All right. Let's start up here on the T-top. This is pretty cool here. I put these around. These are just from a headlamp, from old headlamps. I just took them and zip strapped them up here, my little draw ties, and you can see it adds light around the boat. Can you see that? Just add some light around. Everyone's got old headlamps laying around. Come back here, we got these little retractable snippers. Boomerang Tool Company, they last pretty long. I've had them on there for a while. Really good to have. You can go ahead and make your, make your snips and go. Another one here. You can put them all the way around your tea top. If you look at and you see stuff like this, these are just for my cameras. These are just camera mounts that I have around. If you look up here, I have my Smith adjustable rod holders on my outer rail here. This is just a grab rail, but it's a great place for putting rods. This is for when we're running down the lake and, uh, you know, with the rods up and out of the way, running down the lake, running down the bay, the sound, whatever, gets them up and out of the way. Love these. Same thing on the other side. All right, let's move inside. You'll see this rod holder here. I just use this to keep a GoPro camera in. So the camera that we're shooting with right now, I just take it and put it here. And I'll even run a wire right to it and charge it sitting right there. Up here, I keep my wires, chargers. Like I said, it's just for charging. It's just a little USB port, cigarette lighter style. And cigarette, you know, cigarette lighters, sunglasses, you know, cell phones, great spot for it. It is dry. All right, looking up top in the electronics box, very important stuff up here. Just that out. You want to have a couple different lights up here. This is a floodlight. Okay, if you have a floodlight, a good waterproof rechargeable floodlight, you're going to need a spotlight as well. Now, why do you need both? Well, you need both because when you're running at night, this is a spotlight. I have it on right now, it's 1400 lumens and it's not really hitting the camera. All right, it's not really even, even when I come this close, it's not really blinding the camera. This is a floodlight. If I come that close, I don't know if you can see, but it, it kind of kills your night vision. So a floodlight, you turn it on, it's going to light up your whole boat. It'll kill your night vision. So you have to have a flood for finding markers. And a spotlight is, is the best for looking for stuff far away. You know, you, on water you don't, you're not familiar with. Even water you are, are familiar with. Have a spotlight. You can see your markers when you're running. If I use this one here while I was running, it would kill my night vision. I couldn't do it. I'd have to stop. So if we're running, have a spotlight. When you're stopped and looking around, have a floodlight. Have two of them ready to go. Another really neat one. In case your battery dies. Now this will start a motor with a partially dead battery. Not completely. If it's totally dead, you're going to need your jumper cables. But this here is a jump pack. And it comes with these little jump cables. You can even plug through the cigarette lighter. If you're like mostly dead just dead enough where it whoop, 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 won't start the motor this will go ahead and get you kicked over really good thing to have on the boat if it's totally dead won't work you need you need your uh, jumper cables to jump off your trolling motor battery all right what else we got in here I have a small electronics box in here i have another flashlight connectors for your chargers another lighter extra batteries for your flashlight or your trolling motor remote memory cards with backed up software for your sim rads you know you never know you go out there with new software you're trying it 
and something's not quite right or you're not used to the, the new you know the uh, the new software and you panic a little bit you can always go back to your old software very important and a nice dry box all right on the outside here we have a cutting board eric simmons made this fat fish designs i love this cutting board let me check it out you can make them however you want i didn't want a terribly big one i had a giant one here before we only use it for cutting bait we don't fillet fish or anything on it i had him put these knife slots in the back a spot here for your you know your scissors or your pliers he can make whatever you want love this board he did a really nice job we have our chuck it this is for chuck and chum that there let's take a look at our batteries now up here this is our battery lazarette for our trolling motor there's three group 31 batteries go with the biggest batteries you can fit these are big AGM group 31s you can see my charger back in there it's a three bank charger I'm not a you know a real big fan of AGM batteries I had a few of the uh, blue tops the really expensive ones and I didn't have good luck with them I already bought these at the time and these are about three years old and they're doing really well so far I love these these are just Cabela's brands but the interstate they called it a group 29 I believe it's a 31 now but their 29 was bigger than most 31s the interstate marine group 31 stay with it it's an acid battery but it is reliable it's inexpensive and that's what I would recommend forever and ever trolling motor Motor guide, XI-5, love it. Anchor lock, GPS steer, super reliable, love it. All right, up on the T-top, you'll see this here. This is for our weather curtain, it just slides in here. These are for cameras, just move these around these clamps. Love the floodlight, if you can get a boat with a floodlight here, it's not terribly spottish, you know, it's, it is going to light up the bow of the boat just a little bit, but it floods so much. It's great for when you're coming into the harbor and you need to see mooring buoys. Uh, don't run on plane with this is when you come off a plane, use your radar for on plane. But this thing is fantastic. I don't know how I lived with it without it. All right, let's take a minute and look at the lazarette in the back. I'll show you some of my transducers. Okay. Two batteries, house and starting. Here's that blue top. It's one of the last ones I have. I'm not a big fan of them. Love the interstate like we talked about. Now, if you're looking over here, these are my through-hole transducers. I love this C-Pro because it has cutoffs at all your pumps. You can pop these cartridges out really quick and change them. I can add more transducers here. Lots of great room. These battery lazarettes are sealed off from the bilge. They're very low in the boat at the water line, but they're sealed from the bilge. So if this bilge floods, water won't find its way in here. This is just to add the stability to keep the boat very stable, have all this extra weight at the water line. And it's very, really very convenient. It's very convenient access for transducers. Now the two that I have here, they're both chirp transducers. One is a B175 medium chirp. One is a B175 high wide. 25 degree cone the whole time. You may ask me why I need both. Well, I love the wide cone and shallower water. Shallow, we're talking less than 500 feet for these transducers. But as striped bass fishermen, we are normally targeting fish in less than 100 feet of water. Usually quite uh, shallower than that at most of the time. Now with the wide cone, if I'm in open water, I can see fish that are kind of around the boat, not necessarily directly under the cone. So using them as uh, weapons together, I can pinpoint where these fish are. So if I'm running on plane or if I'm moving quick, I can use the wide cone to find those fish. Now, if I have down lines and I can watch the fish bite, you know, if I have my line going straight down, I can pinpoint the actual fish looking at my baits with the medium chirp, it's a much narrower cone. So I use the wider cone to find those fish. And then once I'm on the fish, I'll switch to the medium cone, which is a narrower cone. And now I can really see the fish on my baits. They work really well together. Awesome combination with my Simrads. Let's take a look at the trans, transom mount transducers right now. All right, looking at our transducers here. This is a TM165. I just got done testing this one. Super wide cone, 30 degrees all the time. It is 600 watts. High wide, high chirp wide. Fantastic transducer. 
The other side, we have our active imaging. This gives us our side scan and down scan. I am adding a second one, so I'll have two active imagings on here, just so I can use different frequencies on my down scan. I like 455 a little better on down scan and 800 in side scan. So these are our two trans amount transducers. I do want to take a second and talk about the Suzuki 350. One thing I was not ready for with this motor was the torque. I know it's 12 to 1. It's the highest compression ratio of any production motor, but I really wasn't sure what that translated to. It behaves like a diesel engine. If I'm running, say, 55 with two people in here wide open, I could run 53 with five or six guys in here. The top speed is almost the same. It's crazy. Don't quote me on those exact numbers. I haven't really tested the exact high speed with just one guy. But the fall off between wide open with a few guys or grossly overloaded is nearly the same. It's incredible. I mean, that is the biggest thing. That's the thing everyone should be talking about with this motor. Absolute crazy. A lot of that has to do with the contra rotating props. They grab 80% more water, allow you to run your motor higher trim settings, higher jack plate settings, much narrower gear case because these props are stacked in front of each other. All right, guys, there you have it. I just wanted to take a few minutes, not make this terribly long, and show you all the basics of what I keep on the boat all the time. Like I said, we catch fish all over the East Coast, into Kentucky, and all the way up and down, in freshwater, saltwater, shallow deep. And I think that that gives you a really strong basis to show what you need for all of that stuff. Now, obviously, like I said before, I have tons and tons of stuff to carry. I, we carry much more than that. But these are all the things that stay in the boat all the time, the bare essentials, the stuff that keep us floating, the stuff that we go to, the fundamental stuff. Hopefully, this helps you guys out a little bit. If you have any questions or ideas of cooler stuff to carry, safer stuff to carry, smarter stuff to carry, put them in the comments. Let's make this a thing that helps everybody out. I really appreciate your feedback on this. Put it right in the comments. I answer every single question. So shoot me a text if you want. I'll put my text, you know, my cell phone number in the description. Stay safe on the water. Leave a few for me. And guys, please subscribe. I love you. I mean it. Thanks for watching.